Adjacent to the northern boundary of the iconic Stirling Range National Park is one of Western Australia's hidden treasures, a series of ancient salt lakes. These lakes now sit within the agricultural landscape where most of the remnant bushland has been cleared. The rural community of Cranbrook, led by the Gillamay Centre, has embraced the challenge to conserve these wetlands. I'm Corina Bateman, I work with the Gillamay Centre in the Cranbrook area. We're a sustainable ag natural resource management group that works with our local farmers to promote sustainable agriculture, which includes looking after our environment. Working with the environment and with production allows projects like today to flourish and the biodiversity of this amazing area to be available for future generations. Despite many of these lakes being highly saline and intermittently full of water, they are a haven for bird life, including a number of threatened species of resident and migratory shorebirds. I'm Tony Peterson, I'm a volunteer for Green Skills and I've been doing a fair bit of work on the salt lakes around this area. Salt lakes here are significant in that at certain times of year they hold water that uh, isn't available elsewhere. It's especially significant for the waterfowl and for the wading birds and in some seasons where these lakes in the North Stirlings hold water and lakes in other areas don't, they can be very significant as uh, roosting, feeding and breeding areas for hooded plovers, one of our threatened bird species. Hooded plovers in Western Australia are a little different from those over east in that over east they favour the sorts of beaches that people favour, as they do here, but in Western Australia a certain amount of breeding takes place on inland lakes. And what's significant about lakes like this one and the others in the area is that the fencing that's been done to protect them from sheep and grazing makes them much more successful as breeding areas for the hooded plovers. A lot of the wading birds here, such as the red-capped dotterels, nest along the beaches and shorelines of these areas and their nests and the young are consequently uh, fairly easy prey for foxes and cats and uh, it's really important in these areas that we get some controls in place so that successful breeding over the years can slowly build the numbers back up. As part of the efforts to understand and care for these wetlands, Cranbrook Primary School has teamed up with water ecologist Geraldine Janicki to survey the food chain that these birds depend on and teach the students about the importance of these lakes. These wetlands are valuable bird habitat because of the invertebrate uh, ecology within them. The slightly fresher wetlands have an amazing amount of microcrustaceans that are food sources for some of the birds that you'll find here, particularly your filter feeders. So this is the algae and aquatic grasses that the swans and other birds, ducks that eat herbaceous material, the teals, the mountain duck or a shell duck as it's now called, will be eating this stuff. It's also the fantastic habitat for the invertebrates. Key actions that landholders are taking include fencing and rehabilitating the foreshores of these lakes. So we, uh, we put in yeah, 3.7 k's of fencing right around the lake, which is uh, yeah, to keep the sheep out, um, which is fantastic. To First we went along and just cleared a bit of a path, pushed a few dead limbs and whatever else out of the way, and then yeah, just erected the fence, let all the trees and shrubs regenerate and birds or whatever and nesting. And, yeah, no, it'll be a good thing. Third generation Cranbrook farmer and chairman of the Gillamay Centre, Sam Lehman, summarises what farmers can and are doing for the living lakes of the North Stirlings. So we've got a lot of lakes um, through, through this low-lying country and those, those lakes are, um, if we leave them as they were, the stock just degrade the edges of those lakes and they just get worse and worse and over time those, uh, the edges of those lakes end up blowing up into your paddocks and it's an eyesore and, uh, and it's, it's not something you want to um, just leave be so over time we've been fencing off lakes probably for the last 15 years to 20 years possibly and um, what we've done is just fenced off best we can around those lakes 
and um, planted the right species, getting the right advice from through Gillamai and um, green skills on what species to plant, how far off the lake's edge we should be um, fencing and uh, basically what, what we can do to make it work. And um, yeah, we've had pretty good success over the years. We've now got most of our lakes fenced off and they're covering. So it's, it's now um, quite pleasant to drive past these lakes and you see the green revenge on the, on the edges and, um, and a lot of the wildlife that's come back because of the work we've done. On this outing, the students from the Cranbrook Primary School were able to judge the survival and health of the native trees and shrubs they helped plant the previous winter. Here we are at a, one of our eucalypts, this is flat top eight, and you can see it's growing quite well. It's managed to survive the, the first three months, and that's great. These plantings will help restore fauna habitat and protect the fragile shorelines from erosion. They also came away with a better understanding of the ecology of these lakes their value as a food source for a wide range of birds and how science can assist in wetland management. Plus, they learnt that studying the environment can be fun. The ongoing efforts to conserve the biodiversity of the North Stirling Lakes demonstrates how a rural community working together can make a big difference to its local environment.